join the Wrens to do all sorts of jobs, but they have one thing in common. Whatever you do, you'll be important, and you'll know you're part of a service that's playing a vital it's role. moving away because the pressure's beginning to rise now. Much more yep. So it should be quite good this morning. So I'll be okay for my sorting. Certainly will. Yeah. 1707 knots. Um, the air temperature is 8.9 with a dew point of 6.7. Wrens work at bases all over the UK and sometimes abroad, like here in Gibraltar, providing essential support for the Royal Navy. It all started in the First World War. And in the second, wrens extended the range of their work and served with distinction at home and abroad. Since 1939, the wrens have been a permanent part of the Royal Navy. Morning, Iris. I've come to take over the watch. Morning, man. Right. Got that one to go. The ship's at uh, two minutes past ten. It's to do with the Thursday war. A starter is a fish pate. The wrens and the navy share many jobs and responsibilities and use the same skills. The main difference is that wrens don't usually go to sea. Except on day runs. Wren weapon analysts go to sea to monitor test firings. Wrens work in all the key areas of the Navy, Naval Air Stations, Royal Navy and Royal Marine Establishments and NATO bases. Each Wren specialises and is trained to work in the particular branch she has chosen before joining. But first, everyone goes through the same basic training. Wren's ratings, cadet entry and direct entry officers all join HMS Rally together for general naval training. Royal Naval Ratings also train at HMS Rally, but this is the only time in their careers that the Wrens and the men of the Navy do not train or work together. When I arrived at Rally for my initial training, I didn't unpack my suitcase for about three weeks because I was so petrified that I might be leaving in the near future. But I got on fine. Once you get used to it, um, the discipline is a part of the Navy. You learn to respect it. There was 23 of us to start with. We were told that it would be very hard and to pull together as a team, because that's the way to, to get through it. It's hard to pull as a team, because uh, you've got different backgrounds and we'll get in there. Well done. You showed a lot of courage in the swimming pool yesterday afternoon. I know you thought you were going to drown at one point, but you didn't, so well done. Since we've been here, we've learned discipline, marching, drill. We've had to fit in uh, studying in, into a very hectic day because we've got exams every week. We've had to learn to iron perfectly. No tram lines in your sleeves. The course does have its tough moments. the assault course I felt really pleased with myself even though you are wet cold and miserable once you've done it you'd realize you'd achieved something and it's really worth doing I'd do it again if I had the chance where are we going up there six seven five eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty-one so we've got about not any other color and you must be plain white gold stud or sleeper earrings the Quans are not allowed to wear any earrings. On your fingers, you may wear a wedding ring or engagement ring if applicable. Bryn Doherty has now changed into somebody else. Or we'll take a good look at the uniform she's got on. Miss Kirk, can you tell me who Ren Doherty is now? Chief Train Regulator Puring. That's You're learning right. about discipline all through the course, not just in lectures. Wrens learn to fire small arms for self-defence and for use in some security situations. You can imagine discipline is necessary for that, but it's all part of Navy life. When you're done with 10 
There's kit inspection, for example. Anything up here, and anything you want to tell me about your kit, Mister, this morning? I don't think there's anything up here. Right. We've got to pay particular attention to uh, small details, such as bits of cotton yes. on your shirts, everything clean, dry, and shirt. perfectly ironed, and then laid out in the morning for half past seven. We get up at half past five in the morning. We don't really go to bed till half past ten at night. Clean your shoes, you need a good hour. I'm a divisional officer here at uh, Dauntless Squadron and they're always encouraged to come and speak to their divisional officer, especially um, in the first two weeks when uh, it's very much a culture shock for them. They get very, very homesick, very unsure about the decision that they've made to join. The third week they tend to settle down a little bit more and although the divisional officer's door is always open, you find as the weeks go by they come less and less. Right, turn! First week everybody was nervous, tired. We've had to get on better because, like, when you march in, you've all to pull together. Going on divisions in the morning, watching the flag go up, watching colours, and the national anthem playing. It's great, great feeling. <laughs> Going through training, everybody's got to work really closely together. That builds people's characters. It's just like a, a really big family. You kept pretty fit marching around the place. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> A proud moment that marks the end of basic training, and then, after professional training, the beginning of a different life as a working wren. It is not OK. It is faster than normally. OK. okay. Job variation is a good thing. Because you're not in the same office for all your career. At least you move about and do different jobs. As a writer, we do several jobs. Pay side, typing, and you can also be a stenographer, do shorthand. So we've got good job variation. It's a good way to meet people and a very good way to travel. I would have never have travelled this much if I hadn't have joined up. First officer McLaughlin. As a rent steward, we, we serve food to the officers, you know, breakfast, lunch and dinner. We taught everything in basic training, silver serving, so, you know, making up punches and that in the bar. I've worked in catering in Surrey Street, but I find that the standards in the Royal Navy were higher. I think the Navy get the best out of you as a person. You're not in the office all the time. Um, you're dealing with different people. You don't know really from one week to the next what part of the store's work you could be doing. At the moment, I'm working in the shop environment. But it could be that next week I'm up in the main stores issuing helicopter gearboxes or engines. I've been away on a computer course, so I'm computer trained now. We're basically trained to, to be able to move. I've been in the Navy for just over two years and I'm a weapon analyst. That involves us going out to sea on the ships. We watch the weapon firing. Sometimes we fly off the ship on the helicopters and sometimes we just catch a boat and go back off. And we come back to the office and look at all the films and the, all of the records we've got, tie them in together and make up the results. So what is that? Could you all 772 to get four sets of gear onto the S61? All the radar jobs are, t are totally different. Every single base I've ever been to, the job is different. Any ships that come through the areas we talk to on the radios, and if they require staff, then we make sure they get the staff on board. I think it helps if you're a bit of an extrovert. The Navy tends to give you trust, and therefore your confidence builds up because you've got to do your job, and a lot of time you're doing it by yourself without supervision. The ROs are basically watch keepers. The most busiest time is exercise time, when really you're the most important person there because without communication, 
that there isn't a navy. I'm happy just being a rain, just just being able to do the job I do, to feel that I'm I'm actually doing something with my life and not just plodding along. From FOJB to General at Gibraltar. We're the main communications with the outside world, which can be quite interesting. We have a lot to do with emergencies throughout each establishment that we're based at. And this involves um, taking the details on an emergency, i.e. a fire or a precautionary landing or search and rescue. I'm a meteorological and oceanographic wren. We draw the plot charts every six hours, which the forecaster then uses um, to, provide, to produce his forecast. You tend to get a lot of satisfaction because you're relied upon and if you get something wrong, it can cause an error to a pilot. Everybody assumes that if you're male, you're going to be a natural mechanic and females aren't natural mechanics. But I know a lot of wrens that are very good mechanics. I am a wren air engineering mechanic, brackets mechanical, which means I sort of do all the airframe and engine side of the aircraft major engine changes which you help in, major component changes which you help in as well, so you learn all the time. My trade is radio air engineering mechanic, so basically obviously I look after the radios and the radars and the helicopters. It's very friendly, it's a very open branch. I like my trade. My job is weapons electrical trade, which is two trades. You have the electrical side of it, also the weapons side which also includes loading weapons, loading the carriers that carry them. Once you've armed an aircraft or you've got it back to serviceability again, you actually see it go flying and you think, well I, I've helped to put that up there. If I was a civilian, I wouldn't think about going playing around because something that's wrong with the car, I'd take it to someone else to fix. Whereas in this job you, you have an insight into it. You will tackle jobs that maybe you think were beyond you before and you've had the training to do so. I enjoy the life, I enjoy the life, I enjoy the job that I do very much. Bye. I'm an ETS Wren, which is education and training support. We could find ourselves working in a place such as this, producing visual aids, giving advice on them, and presentation work. Or we could find ourselves in an education centre, running the library, teaching, or organising resettlement courses for people. Chief Lewis, would you like to come through to surgery number one, please? Thank you I really enjoy being a dental nurse. You've got a really good job, a career in fact. Being in the Wrens shows you exactly what you are capable of. I'm in the dental branch as a dental hygienist. But yeah, I'm glad I joined up actually. I mean, if I'd stayed in a small market town in Wales, I wouldn't exactly have done a lot. Morning, Henry. Good morning, Mum. How can I help you? Can I have a flight ticket, please? Yeah, what was your flight ticket? 31st of January. There are other opportunities once you have experience as a Wren. For example, regulators take on administrative and disciplinary duties. Wrens in the family services look after the welfare of personnel and their families. And PT instructors, there are very few of them, organize and supervise sports and games. Social life's very good. There's always somewhere to go. If you're at home, you have to phone around people, saying, oh, I wonder if anybody wants to go out. But here, people are always coming into your mess, saying, oh, come on, we're, there's a load of us going out. The sports facilities are fantastic. Nearly every sport you can think of. It's the comradeship as well. You're with people that are more or less your own age group all the time. You've got something, you know, um, in common with everyone. Normally you stay at one establishment for 18 months or two years before moving to another base. You meet loads of different people, meet new friends. Every two years you're meeting a new bunch of girls. Um, and you tend to hang on to the friends that you do meet as well. You leave a place, it, it can be very sad when you leave somewhere. But there again, you, you know that you'll probably end up seeing them again someplace. Accommodation at the Cauldrose 
is fantastic, it's really good. We sort of had a, a kettle in there and a toaster and television and radio and stereo. It was just like being home from home, really. And you've got somebody there, so if you're you know, a bit fed up, a bit down in the mouth about something, um, you've got your friends there all the time, somebody to talk to, somebody to, you know you can get on with. While sharing a cabin with other girls is fun, promotion brings your own cabin. The service offers opportunities for travel. Gibraltar, Hong Kong, Brussels, the Falklands or Naples, for example. It's a good way to meet people and a very good way to travel. I would never have travelled this much if I hadn't joined it. There are different ranks and everyone can hope to move up through them, right up to Chief Wren and Warrant Officer Wren, if they have the ability. Length of wait for promotion varies according to opportunities in each branch, as well as on the individual. There are also officers, some join directly, some as cadet entry, the latter being considered for selection as officers after a year or 15 months. Ratings can also become officers if they show potential. Some Wrens have to work on social hours. For instance, communication centers and telephone exchanges operate 24 hours a day. Emergency. SAR. Ops room, me and kids can help you. Scramble the SAR. Okay, Pierre, and it's in position 210 for the bill at 12. Right, 210 at 12, that puts it in Bravo Central 1. Okay, Louise, it's in Bravo, isn't it? If you'd like to tell HMS London, so runs type 0357. Foxtrot 3 Bravo, this is Portland. Due to SAR scramble, guns type serial 357. Scramble the SAR to a position 210 Portlandville, 12 miles. Fishing boats in difficulty. It's the ladies' force and it is the senior service. It's a good life, like security there, and a great sense of fun. Being in the Wrens, I've achieved much more than I ever thought I was capable of achieving. The one thing I'll never regret was joining up. The best thing I ever did. Mm -hmm.